Today, we're going to learn about Ton Domain Reflectometers, or TDR for short. These are very expensive lab equipment used for detecting faults in electrical wires, measuring propagation velocity, and much more. I'm here to show you how they work. A simple TDR looks like this. It contains a DC voltage pulse generator, we'll call that VG, some input impedance, we'll call that ZG, and a switch. It also contains a display, like the one shown here, which shows a plot of the voltage at the end of the TDR versus the time. But how would you use this to analyze a wire? Well, first, you'll take your wire of interest and you'll connect it to the TDR like so. Then, you'll go into the settings of your TDR and you'll input the magnitude as well as the pulse width of your generator voltage. Now when that switch closes, the DC wave will travel back and forth inside the transmission line until it reaches steady state. Then you can look at your display, adjust the axes accordingly, and find out the type of the fault and the location of it. If the transmission line has no faults, then you can find out the propagation velocity by measuring the time it took for the wave to travel from one end of the transmission line to the other. Now you're probably thinking, how is this gadget different from a DC voltage supply and an oscilloscope? Wouldn't using those two combined rather than the TDR be way cheaper and more familiar? Well, that's partially true. Using a DC voltage supply and an oscilloscope would satisfy the basics of the TDR. But there's a reason why TDRs exist separately. Every single element and values in the TDR are precisely set and made so that even the small steps in the picosecond range can be picked up. Your regular DC voltage supply or oscilloscope may not be powerful enough to generate these short steps or analyze them properly. That is why TDRs are much more expensive than power supplies and oscilloscopes, but they are still used in the industry. Before we solve some examples, let's take a look at some simplifications we're going to use for the rest of the video. First, we're going to assign the variable capital T to the time it takes for the wave to travel from one end of the transmission line to the other. We're also going to make the ZG equal to Z0 so that the reflection coefficient at the generator end is zero. What does this mean? This means that after the incident wave travels down the transmission line, and the first reflected wave travels back up the transmission line, that is it. There are no more reflections. That is because after the reflected wave hits the generator end, it is multiplied by zero. Hence, there are no more reflections. This means that after 2t seconds, steady state is already reached. And at steady state, transmission lines are shorted. That is because every reflection inside the transmission line will charge it up effectively leaving it at a short circuit. So using what we know, let's solve case 1a. It is a TDR connected to a transmission line with a purely resistive load. They also tell us the initial condition that ZL is bigger than Z0. So now that we know that the circuit will reach steady state after 2T, we can divide the circuit into two situations. One where steady state has not been reached yet, which is on the left, and one where steady state has been reached on the right. When steady state has not been reached yet, the transmission line is still there. This means that any wave coming out from the voltage generator cannot comprehend what's happening on the other side of the transmission line. Why is that? It's because the transmission line is much too long for the voltage wave to see what's on the other side. It only sees ZG and Z0. This will effectively make a voltage divider between Z0 and ZG, therefore making the incident wave Z VG over 2. Let's take a look at the steady state circuit. 
The transmission line is now short, meaning that all we're left with is ZL and CG. This will make another voltage divider of VG times ZL over ZG plus ZL. Now, now let's look at our initial condition. We said that ZL is bigger than Z0. This means that ZL over Z0 plus ZL is bigger than 1 over 2. This means that the steady state voltage of the TDR is bigger than the incident voltage of the TDR. So when we're drawing our graph, we'll first start off with VG over 2. And at 2T, it will jump up to VG times ZL over Z0 plus ZL. And that is it. That's the graph for the case 1A. Now let's take a look at case 1B. Um, it is the same circuit, but now the initial condition is different. Now Z0 is bigger than ZL. You might think that this doesn't change much, uh, but it does change something. First of all, it doesn't change any of the circuits, right? The orientation are still the same, and the equations for the voltages are also still the same. The incident voltage is still VG over 2, and the steady state voltage is still VG times ZL over ZG plus ZL. What does change, however, is the initial uh, condition, that Z0 is bigger than ZL. This means that ZL over Z0 plus ZL is now smaller than 1 over 2. This means that the incident voltage of the TDR is now bigger than the steady state voltage of the TDR. So we'll, we'll again start off with VG over 2. But at 2t, it will now decrease down to Vg times Zl over Z0 plus Zl. And it, continues on, and it continues on like that. So those are the two TDR graphs for the two cases. Now let's take a look at case number two. It is a TDR connected to a transmission line with a capacitor as a load. How do we deal with reactive components in these cases? Well, all we need to look at are the boundary conditions. When time goes from 0 to 2t, we know that the voltage at the generator end can only perceive the capacitor as a short because the time is still early. So we can draw it as a short. However, as time goes on, it'll slowly turn into an open circuit, making this new circuit that we see on the right side. So, when time goes from 0 to 2t, what is our V plus? Our V plus is still Vg over 2, because Zg and Z0 are still the same. The reflection coefficient at a short circuit is negative 1, therefore making V minus equal to negative V plus. Adding those two for the final value is 0. And then it will exponentially turn into this new circuit, where V is Vg, because the capacitor is an open, so no current flows. Therefore, we start at Vg over 2, drop down to 0 at t equals 2t, and then we gradually increase to our final value of Vg. Now let's take a look at the second, third case, where the load is now an inductor. We do it with the same approach. An inductor is opened initially, and then it turns into a short circuit. So from 0 to 2t, the inductor is open, and the circuit looks like this. Therefore, vt is still vg over 2. However, the reflection coefficient for an open circuit is 1. The entire wave reflects back. So v minus is v plus, and adding those two, we get vg. And when the inductor turns into a short circuit, uh, there is no voltage drop through a short circuit, so V is 0 at the end. So we start off at Vg divided by 2, and at 2t, it jumps up to Vg, then it slowly drops down to 0. And that is my answer for case number 3. Now for the final two cases, we do the same thing that we did before. So when time is from 0 to 2t, the capacitor will be shorted, therefore we have the circuit on the left. Vt will still be Vg over 2, 
Because the load side is now matched with Z0 and Z0, V minus is now 0. Therefore, the V at 2t will be V plus plus V minus, which is Vg over 2. However, at steady state, the capacitor is open, making the circuit on the right. Uh, a simple voltage divider equation will do, making the final voltage 2 over 3 Vg. Plotting this, we'll start out at Vg over 2, and at 2t, we will start to gradually increase to a level of to a level of 2 over 3 Vg. And we'll start out at Vg over 2. There, that's the first graph. And for the last case, we have another circuit with uh, reactive components. So from 0 to 2t, the inductor will be opened so that all we have here is a, a circuit on the left. Uh, v plus will still be Vg over 2. V minus, now that there's an open circuit, the reflection coefficient is now 1. So V minus will be V plus, and the voltage at 2T will be V plus plus V minus, which is just VG. And at our steady state, the inductor is now shorted, and all the transmission lines are now also shorted. We also have another voltage divider equation, uh, which gives us 1 over 3 VG. So we'll start out at uh, VG over 2, and at 2T, we'll see a sudden increase to Vg, and it'll decrease exponentially down to the level of Vg over 3. That is the graph for the final example.